I have the honor to chair this uh, kind of session uh, today, uh, mostly because you know we distributed different lectures uh, between us, and uh, I uh, already knew Professor Nobuyoshi Yamabe from his art historical work, which I, uh, of course was uh, interesting for for me. Uh, he studied in Osaka. Uh, and I think already there he got the the, the kind of seed of his yoga shara interest. <laughs> uh, but then uh, also did the PhD, the doctoral degree at Yale University, uh, and they have worked on a different subject, namely the visualization sutra. And I think these two <laughs> uh, areas kind of remained his, his kind of main focus. With the link between them is the connection to practical meditation uh, in both uh, doctrine, how doctrine reflects practical meditation, and also how art, for example, reflects uh, practic practical meditation experiences. And I think the, this uh, kind of broad perspective on uh, Buddhism deriving from India, being practiced in Central Asia and China as well, uh, is kind of reflected, for example, in the two latest works that I know of. Uh, one, for example, on, on the Kumtura Cave uh, 75, a kind of reconstruction or restor digital restoration of its paintings and an examination of relevant motifs and inscriptions that. Uh, came out fairly recently, and actually two days ago, uh, uh, a Yogacara article came out that is called uh, uh, Alaya Vichnana from a practical point of view at the Journal of Indian Philosophy. And I think that demonstrates the broad range of, of his uh, expertise. And so I'm looking forward to uh, the talk today, successive causality and simultaneous causality in the Yogacara theory of the Bija. Welcome. So, uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Arutzanis, uh, for your very kind introduction. And uh, thank you, uh, everybody, for uh, your participation uh, in the middle of this uh, rather snowy weather. Yeah. And uh, so, uh, uh, this morning, uh, also, I talked about uh, the, uh, some other, uh, some uh, later uh, development of the Yogacara uh, theory of Bija. And uh, now, uh, I'd like to talk about some un other aspect of the Bija theory, uh, namely successive causality and simultaneous causality. Hmm. Okay. So, uh, but, uh, these are, uh, as you know, a famous uh, triad of the uh, important figures in the early uh, Yogacara uh, history uh, in uh, Hokuendo Chapel in Kofukuji uh, in Nara. And uh, the central figure is Maitreya, and uh, to your right uh, you see Asanga, and to your left uh, you see Vasubandhu. Uh, they are, uh, as you know, uh, important uh, brothers. And uh, this is Maitreya, and uh, this is of course a legendary figure, and he is a Bodhisattva in uh, Toshita, and he is practicing to be uh, the next Buddha. And uh, this is a Sangha. And uh, uh, this is a famous <coughs> Uh, sculpture uh, by uh, 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 important uh, Buddhist uh, artist uh, Unke in the early uh, Kamakura period, and <coughs> I'm sorry. And so obviously uh, he had no idea. And he must have had no idea uh, about uh, how uh, Asanga and Vasubandhu looked like. Uh, but if you uh, compare uh, these uh, two persons, uh, this is Asanga and. This is Vasubandhu, and you know uh, they are different, uh, re represented uh, quite differently, I think. And Vasubandhu, you know, doesn't really look like a friendly person. He <laughs> looks like a very uh, dif a difficult and argumentative person. And you know, I, I think probably he was this kind of person, uh, judging from his Abhidharma Kosha, etc. 
and and uh, and Asanga uh, looks like uh, you know more profound and calm spiritual type of figure. And I think uh, he was indeed this kind of person. He had deep meditative experience, and according to the tradition, he uh, using his uh, meditative power. <coughs> He ascended uh, to the Tushita heaven and uh, encountered Maitreya, Maitreya and uh, received uh, teachings from Maitreya. Yeah. So uh, I think uh, uh, Japanese uh, artists uh, had a good idea of uh, the uh, characters, different personalities of these two important religious figures. Okay, and uh, Asanga uh, uh, wrote uh, many important uh, Treatises, but uh, I, I've listed only the three works uh, that are directly relevant to uh, this talk. And the first one is uh, obviously the Yogacara Bhumi. And Yogacara Bhumi is not uh, exactly a Sangha's uh, original work uh, because, according to the tradition, this is the <coughs> teaching uh, he was given by Maitreya. Uh, so, uh, in East Asian tradition, uh, Yogacara Bhumi is uh, <coughs> uh, usually attributed to uh, Maitreya himself. But anyway, uh, both uh, according to the Tibetan tradition and uh, East Asian tradition, it was Asanga who received uh, Yogacara Bhumi and uh, distrib uh, you know, disseminated in the human world. And uh, Mahayana Sangra and Abhidharma Samuche, uh, 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 I'm sorry, I, I missed an H here. Uh, <laughs> just the D H. And uh, these are two uh, Asanga's uh, original uh, uh, and theoretical works. And um, Yogacara Bhumi, <coughs> uh, according to uh, the modern scholarship, particularly by uh, Professor Aramet Schmidthausen, uh, this is not a work, a con uh, coherent work uh, written by a single author. And this is a uh, compilation of uh, some uh, historical development. And uh, so uh, this has some uh, older elements and uh, younger elements, as I discussed uh, this morning. And uh, it consists of the, these five uh, sections, basic section, Vinicius Sangrahani, uh, Vibran Sangrahani, and Pariyaya Sangrahani, and the Bas Sangrahani. And uh, for this uh, talk, uh, directly relevant portions are uh, uh, the first two chapters, Pancha Vijinana Kaya Samprekta Bhumis and Mano Bhumi in the basic section. And uh, uh, Lambert Schmidthausen uh, you know, uh, uh, published many important works uh, about uh, Yogacara Buddhism, and this is one of his representative uh, works. And according to uh, Professor Schmidthausen, uh, there are at least uh, there are three uh, strata uh, of uh, the Yogacara Bhumi. And the oldest uh, portion is uh, part of the uh, basic section, in particular, Shravaka Bhumi, is a, a chapter uh, discussing uh, the traditional uh, practice of uh, auditors. And then, Bodhisattva Bhumi, uh, obviously, is discussing the practice of uh, Mahayanist Bodhisattva. And then uh, Basangrahani. Uh, this is a uh, sort of a commentarial uh, portion on uh, Sanyukta Agama, uh, one of the traditional Agamas. And then the uh, second layer is the other parts of the basic section. And, and then the uh, youngest layer is the Vinisha Sangrahani. Okay, and uh, the talk today is based on this paper uh, of myself, uh, BJR's uh, Successful Causality and Simultaneous Causality in Shravaka Bhumi and Buddhist, uh, yeah, uh, in this uh, uh, book. And so if you are interested, uh, this uh, paper is available at uh, this uh, uh, Academia uh, site, so uh, you can download it freely. Okay, uh, as you know, uh, the established uh, system of Yogacara has uh, these um, eight uh, kinds of uh, consciousness. And uh, first is Chakshur Vijnana, uh, visual consciousness. 
and the short Virginiana uh, auditory consciousness and the grand Virginiana, uh, you know, uh, the sense of smell and Jifuba uh, Virginiana uh, sense of taste and the Kaya Virginiana, uh, you know, uh, tactile uh, sensations. And then Mano Virginiana, this is a uh, judging mind. And then Krishna Manas, uh, defiled mind, this is subliminal ego consciousness. And then Arya Virginiana, uh, you know, uh, often called a storehouse consciousness that uh, stores all the records of your past uh, experiences. And according to uh, the uh, Pancha Vijnana Kaya Samprekta Bhumi of the basic section, the uh, very first chapter of the Yogacara Bhumi, uh, it says uh, as follows. Uh, let me read uh, just the English translation. What is the basis for the eye consciousness? Uh, there are three bases. The first one is coexisting basis. Uh, that is the uh, visual faculty of the eye. So uh, in Duria, uh, for uh, Vijnana to uh, arise, there must be uh, in Duria that support uh, Vijnana. And uh, that is the first uh, Ashraya basis. And the second uh, basis is Samanantara Ashraya, uh, the preceding basis. And that is Manas. And th this is Manas in the traditional sense, namely uh, consciousness that has uh, perished in the preceding moment. Yeah, because the preceding moment perishes, the succeeding moment uh, takes place. And that is the traditional Abhidharmic uh, system of consciousness. And then the third basis is the seed basis, uh, Bija Ashraya. And seed basis is Arya Vijnana. Uh, which contains all the seeds, uh, physiologically maintains the body, and is comprised in karmic uh, maturation. Yeah. So uh, for all the uh, five sense uh, consciousness, uh, you know, uh, there are similar uh, descriptions of uh, three types of ashrayas. And then for uh, Manu Vijnana, uh, mind, uh, there are only two bases, uh, Ashraya Hakatamah. Uh, there are Samanantara Ashraya and Bija Ashraya. Samanantara Ashraya is uh, the preceding basis, is Manas, the same thing. So uh, the mind of the consciousness of the uh, preceding moment. And then the seed basis is, uh, as described above, Arya Vijnana that contains uh, all the seeds. So, uh, which means that uh, for Manu Vijnana, there is no uh, material uh, faculty uh, in Durya. Uh, so, there are only two bases. Yeah. And uh, this is found in Mano, uh, MBH stands for Mano Bhumi, so the second chapter of the basic section. Okay, and then, you know, Chemei Shurun. And so, uh, once again, uh, Vasubandhu. And, okay, so Vasubandhu uh, wrote many uh, texts, but uh, for this purpose, uh, for the purpose of this talk, uh, the directly relevant uh, text is this uh, Trinshika Vijnati Matra, the CD, uh, 30 verses on uh, consciousness only. And this is, uh, a uh, concise text, and he didn't write a uh, commentary by himself. So there are uh, different interpretations. And according to uh, the East Asian uh, tradition, uh, 10 masters wrote 10 separate commentaries. And uh, uh, among those uh, 10 masters, the best known ones are these uh, two, Dharmapada and Stramati, and there are obviously eight others. And then, uh, just famous master Xuanzang uh, <coughs> went all the way from China to India to study Yogacara Buddhism. And uh, after uh, his return to uh, China, Chang'an, uh, ac uh, again, according to the East Asian tradition, uh, first Xuanzang uh, thought that he should translate these 10 commentaries separately. And, but then uh, one of his major uh, Disciples, uh, Tsuen, uh, Fashi, uh, suggested that if you uh, different, 10 different uh, commentaries separately, it will only confuse people. So you should compile uh, these uh, 10 different commentaries into a single text. And uh, you should clearly show that which is the 
correct interpretation and which is the wrong interpretation uh, so that uh, you know the text would not uh, confuse later people and uh, Xuanzang accepted uh, that suggestion so he compiled uh, you know one single text and that is a uh, uh, this is a Chinese text but uh, probably uh, the Sanskrit uh, Xuanzang had in mind is also vision city and obviously, uh, this text uh, exists only in Chinese. Yeah. And uh, this is what the uh, uh, tradition said. And so, uh, if you look at uh, the text of this uh, Chang Wei uh, indeed, uh, often we find uh, a few different interpretations, you know, uh, juxtaposed. And so, first interpretation is this, and second interpretation is, and the third interpretation is this. And usually, the last interpretation is the uh, uh, one that is uh, uh, regarded to be the correct interpretation by the fashion uh, school. And so, uh, it appears that uh, indeed uh, this is a compilation of several different uh, commentaries. However, I'm not totally convinced by this uh, tradition. Uh, and uh, I discussed that point in this uh, Japanese paper. And what I said is that uh, if you look at uh, this Vibrita uh, Gusya, the Pinda Viakia, and the anonymous uh, commentary on, on the uh, Mahayana Sangraha that uh, I discussed uh, this morning, in this Vibrita Gusya, the Pinda Viakia, also, uh, oftentimes, a few different theories are juxtaposed. Uh, on the same uh, question. So, my suspicion is that uh, uh, perhaps, uh, you know, just uh, giving different interpretations on the same issue as the style of uh, later uh, Yogacara text uh, in India. And so, my, my suspicion, again, this is just suspicion, but uh, just uh, Tsuen Fashi, you know, uh, wanted to claim that uh, he, he only, only he knows the, let's say, a secret of Yogacara, you know. So if you want to uh, understand uh, the essence of Yogacara, you have to come to me and <laughs> receive my teaching. Yeah, so, so what he says uh, on this matter is not totally reliable. That's my suspicion. Anyhow. Uh, according to uh, the uh, 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 concerning the uh, seed basis, uh, we find this uh, argument. Uh, let me read the English translation. With regard to the first seed basis, Bija uh, Ashraya, someone maintains as follows. Uh, only after the seed perishes can the effect uh, arise. Because the Abhidharma Samuchaya, uh, you know, uh, one of Asanga's texts, uh, says, arisen without seed, abija panna, and because seeds and sprouts and, those, and so forth cannot coexist. Uh, when we see a sprout, the seed is uh, no more existent. You know? So uh, first cause and then uh, result. So cause and result cannot coexist. Uh, this is uh, uh, the first opinion. So uh, this is a successive causality theory, right? And then, uh, others maintain, this is the second opinion, uh, their reasoning is not conclusive because the passage they quote concerns the generation of uh, subsequent uh, seed uh, because uh, it is not uh, the ultimate truth that a seed gives rise to a sprout and so forth. And because it has not been established that a sprout arises after the seed perishes, since a flame and a wick are simultaneous and cause each other. So it is not necessarily the case that a uh, you know, a cause must precede uh, the result. Sometimes cause and result can coexist, like uh, flame and a wick. Right? So this is the second uh, opinion. And uh, they continue. The causality between successive seeds themselves is not simultaneous, but the uh, mutual generation of potential seeds and actual elements is definitely uh, simultaneous. Uh, therefore, the Yogacara Bhumi states, 
an impermanent element causes another element, parababa, and also causes the same element in the subsequent moment. This is what a uh, generative cause, het pratyaya, means. Here, the same element indicates that among the seeds themselves, a previous one causes a subsequent one. Another element uh, shows that the seed and the corresponding actualized element mutually cause each other. So uh, it is something like this. You know, in Buddhism, everything is impermanent and nothing uh, lasts forever. So uh, one moment of bija seed uh, perishes and then it must give rise to uh, uh, the same bija in the uh, succeed, uh, you know, uh, subsequent moment and so forth. So the causality between the uh, preceding bija and the following bija are obviously successive. But uh, uh, in terms of the bija and the corresponding dharma, uh, bija, uh, according to the established system of Yogacara, uh, bija uh, causes uh, actual dharma, and they uh, can coexist because they, they, uh, you know, uh, they correspond uh, to each other, but uh, they are not exactly the same thing, so they can coexist. Yeah, uh, so uh, this is what the text uh, is saying here. Uh, then, uh, the Mahayana Sangraha, uh, another uh, Asanga's work, uh, also states. Uh, other Vijnayana and defiled elements mutually cause uh, each other. They coexist like a band of reeds. Uh, it also states, states and, uh, I'm sorry, uh, seeds and their fruit always coexist. So, uh, the, the same thing, uh, you know, seed and uh, uh, result uh, is dharma and they uh, coexist. Uh, uh, therefore, the seed basis is definitely neither prior nor posterior to its fruit. If some texts say that seeds and their fruit are successive, they are expedient teachings, and they are not the ultimate teaching. And thus, the eight types of consciousness and their uh, mental functions definitely have their respective seed basis. Yeah. So uh, all the uh, uh, Vijnana and uh, Chaitas uh, have uh, respective uh, bijas. Okay, so uh, in this uh, Chamei uh, you know, uh, 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 regarding the uh, bija Asiraya uh, found in the Yogacara Bhumi, uh, Chamei Shirun gives two different interpretations. And the first interpretation is successive causality, so bija and its fruit cannot uh, coexist. And the second interpretation is simultaneous causality, uh, bija and its fruit uh, coexist. And uh, successive causality is compared to uh, the uh, relationship between a seed and uh, a sprout. And uh, the, sim uh, in the, simultane uh, the simultaneous causality is compared to a flame and a wick or a bundle of leaves. Uh, they uh, cause each other and uh, exist uh, together. Okay, and uh, I discussed it. Uh, uh, yeah, so, so here uh, my starting point is Chamei uh, Shirun, which I said is a Chinese text, uh, but uh, it uh, was a compilation or a translation by Xuanzang, and uh, obviously Xuanzang was uh, well familiar with uh, India and Yogacara uh, 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 you know, uh, arguments. So uh, even though this is a Chinese text, it is very likely that it uh, reflects uh, India. Uh, Argument, and uh, I uh, di uh, discussed something similar in this. Uh, uh, this is on a different topic, but uh, another, on another aspect of uh, the bija uh, theory, uh, I tried. Uh, to, let's say, uh, I tried to trace the sources of uh, some controversy found in Chamei Shirun uh, into. Uh, India Yogacara text, and uh, I think something similar uh, can be observed here as well. Okay, so uh, first, uh, let's see, a passage is quoted in support of the successive causality theory. And the first uh, 
passage quoted uh, in the Chaman Shorun is this Abhidharma Samucha. And uh, the original uh, Sanskrit is very concise, only this. Sabi ah, ah. <laughs> Again, sorry. <laughs> there should be no macron. Oh, oh, oh sorry. And Sabija Tupana and Abija Tupana. And uh, the uh, is this one. And so, what has arisen accompanied by a seed, and what has arisen unaccompanied by a seed? And what does it mean? And according to the Abhidharma Samuchaya Varsha uh, commentary on this Abhidharma Samuchaya, uh, we find uh, this uh, explanation. Uh, what has arisen uh, accompanied by a seed means the elements other than the last skandhas of an arhat. And what has arisen unaccompanied by seeds means uh, the last skandhas of an arhat. Okay, so the, da, da, uh, the skandhas, pancha skandhas, in the last moment of an arhat uh, has a special meaning. Uh, how so? Because just after the, the last moment means the last moment of his life. So the next moment is uh, nirvana, complete nirvana, uh, without remainder. So there is no next moment for the last moment of our heart. Uh, uh, because uh, if it is not our heart, uh, even if you die, uh, there will be reincarnation. So uh, this is not the end. But if you are our heart, uh, you have severed all the creations. So no next life. So uh, the last moment is really the last moment. So no subsequent moment. So uh, it is something like this. So as I said, uh, for example, uh, so uh, in the case of Rupa Skanda, Rupa Skanda uh, is uh, also momentary. So the, it must be succeeded by the next moment Rupa Skanda. So here Rupa is at the same time Bija, in the sense that it gives rise to the succeeding Rupa, and, and so on. But this is the last moment. And so there is no next moment. If, you, uh, if an arhat enters uh, nirvana, so the last moment rupa is not bija. That's what this text is saying. Yeah. So, which clearly shows that bija in this context means that something is capable of generating the same thing we're recreating the same thing in the period and uh, the successive moment, right? So this is clearly a uh, successive causality theory. Yeah. And uh, so uh, Chang Shiron's interpretation of this Abhidharma uh, Samucha passage is that uh, when the result arises, the cause has already perished, like season sprouts. And Abhidharma Samucha Varsha's interpretation is that uh, the skandhas of the last moment of arhat uh, do not function as seeds of the uh, subsequent, subsequent moment. So uh, the interpretation uh, are a bit different between these two texts, I think. And th this is the original connotation, uh, original meaning of uh, this uh, Abhijat Panna. Uh, expression. And then, uh, earlier argument about successive causality and simultaneous causality. Uh, successive causality and simultaneous causality is actually uh, one of the uh, popular topics uh, in Indian uh, Buddhism. And uh, for example, uh, we uh, find a uh, relevant discussion in this text, Chang uh, Shiron, Tatva Sindhi. And uh, this is attributed to some Indian master, uh, Haribarban by name. Is, and this is well, uh, a bit obscure text, but probably uh, close to the tradition of Darstantika, uh, which is one of uh, what's it, uh, some uh, unorthodox uh, masters among the surface of the community. And uh, the text says as follows. Uh, also, uh, for what reason do uh, material, uh, visible elements, and so forth arise 
from hardness and the earth element and so forth, but not hardness from material elements. Uh, in addition, since the hardness and material elements co-arise, uh, how can we say that material elements and so forth are caused by hardness and so forth, but hardness and so forth are not caused by material elements and so forth? Further, coexisting elements cannot mutually cause each other. So, uh, Basically, this text uh, seems to be against the simultaneous causality theory. In order to be uh, 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 any two elements uh, or co cause and uh, effect, uh, you know, they can't coexist. Because if uh, two things are already coexisting, one of them cannot really cause the other element, uh, like the uh, two horns. Two horns coexist. Two horns coexist, uh, but uh, we can say that uh, the left and the right horn uh, mutually cause each other. Yeah. Uh, question: uh, In the case of, uh, I guess, in this uh, context, dumb means uh, flame and uh, light. Uh, though they co-arise, uh, uh, we also say that the light is called by the flame, but not the flame is called by the light. The matter of material elements and hardness, uh, etc., should be understood in the same way. Uh, and, and so this is a critique. And the answer of uh, Tatwasiddhi is as follows. A flame and light are not separate. Thus, there is no causality between them. Uh, a flame uh, consists of two elements, visible and tangible elements. Because a visible element is identical to the light, uh, it can't be separated from the flame. Thus, there can be no causality between them. Uh, you have not clearly thought about this simile. So, even though uh, flame and light uh, uh, seems to be an example of simultaneous causality. Uh, it is not the case. Question. Uh, there are still other co-arising elements uh, that become a cause and effect in addition to the examples mentioned above. Uh, for example, with respect to tangible objects, uh, consciousness uh, is caused by the visual fa faculty of the eye and uh, visual element. Yeah, so uh, Chakshur Vijnana is caused by Chakshur Indriya and Rupa as a cognitive object. Uh, but the eye and visual element are not caused by the consciousness, not vice versa. So, uh, this is not an uh, idealist uh, text. So uh, a cognitive object is not a product of your uh, visual consciousness. And uh, that's what uh, this uh, opponent said. And the answer is, uh, this is not the case. Uh, the eye consciousness is caused by the preceding mind and conditioned by the eye and visual uh, element. Uh, because the mind perishes earlier, how can the cause and effect co-arise? And also, uh, the world of uh, we see uh, arises from homogeneous cause. For example, rice, uh, rice grows from rice, wheat grows from wheat. Likewise, earth arises from earth, but water and so forth do not arise from earth. Likewise, a visible element arises from a visible element. Okay, so uh, what it says is basically uh, uh, this one. So, cause must be in the preceding moment. So, uh, for any uh, Chakshiri Vijnana to arise, uh, the generative cause is the preceding moment of uh, the same uh, Chakshiri Vijnana, probably. And other uh, supporting elements, uh, like uh, Indriya and Arambana, uh, they coexist, but they are not generative cause. Yeah, because they are already there, you know, the result is already there. So uh, these uh, sense faculty and the cognitive object are not uh, producing anything further, I think. Yeah, uh, so uh, that's what uh, this uh, text is saying. Uh, there are no elements uh, associated with the mind uh, for what reason? Uh, because uh, 
there are no mental functions. Uh, what can the mind be associated with? Also, mental aspects like sensations cannot be simultaneous. Uh, in essence, the cause and effect are not simultaneous. Uh, since the consciousness is a cause of elements like uh, ideation, they should not co-arise. Uh, therefore, uh, there is no association between the mind and the mental functions. Uh, Sarvastvada uh, said that uh, uh, Vijnana and Chaitas, uh, you know, uh, coexist and work together, associated uh, with each other. But uh, this text does not uh, accept uh, that uh, theory. Therefore, uh, there is no association between the mind and mental functions. In addition, the Buddha states, uh, this arises uh, in the profound dharma of the causality, thus uh, uh, it can arise uh, also uh, just as a grain, sprout, stem, branches, leaves, flowers, and fruit arise in causal uh, succession. Or consciousness and so, and for, so forth, uh, i.e. Uh, mental aspects, must uh, also arise in succession. Yeah. So uh, even among the mental elements, uh, the causality is... Uh, found only in succession. Uh, the uh, generative cause and supportive cause in the order straight of the Yogacara Bhumi. And uh, this passage uh, we have already seen in, in the morning uh, seminar, Kim uh, Kim Prasitiade, etc. The English translation is as follows. Uh, question, preceded by what, based on what, and uh, together with what, what element arises? Answer. Preceded by its own seed, based on the uh, basis other than the seed basis, belonging to the materials, immaterial realms, and karma, and together with the accompanying elements and the cognitive objects, elements uh, tied to the last through material and immaterial realms, as well as elements not tied to any worldly realm, arise respectively. So uh, the uh, key is this uh, first one, uh, the first element, preceded by uh, Kim Purva, uh, Svavija Purva. Right, and uh, I, I think in this context, uh, so, uh, Kim Purva, uh, Kim Purva is a question, and Svabija Purva is the answer. And here, uh, Purva uh, should be taken in its literal sense, uh, preceded by something. Yeah. So uh, again, in this, uh, this is from the Savitaruka Savichara Adi Bumi. So. Uh, uh, one, of, uh, one of the chapters of the basic section. And so it is uh, one of the uh, older uh, elements of the Yogacara Bhumi. And so I think it retains the old uh, Bija model. And old Bija model was the model of successive causality. The preceding uh, element gives rise right to the uh, same element in the uh, next moment. And uh, this also uh, I quoted in, uh, in this morning. Bija uh, Apariya, Panaru Datu, etc. The equivalent of Bija element, etc. So Bija and Datu are also treated as synonyms. And Bija, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Datu uh, is uh, often, uh, in Yogacara tradition at least, uh, often interpreted uh, in the sense of hate. Be, that and hate are the same thing. So that means cause. And so bija and that uh, are also uh, equivalent. And, but that, uh, as you know, uh, is also uh, used in the sense of 18 that, uh, 18 elements that constitute uh, sense of being and the uh, surrounding uh, world. So every element that constitute our cognitive world uh, function as that, i.e. bija, uh, in this uh, early system. Okay, and so the same uh, understanding is found in this uh, Vastangra Hani section, and this also I mentioned in, in, uh, this morning. Uh, it, uh, let me read just the English translation. In some data are twofold the ones existing by nature, so uh, primordial uh, datas, and the ones enhanced through habitual practice. The ones existing by nature are, for example, the 18 datas, which are seeds staying in their own respective continuities.
Yeah, so one of the 18 datus, uh, so each of the 18 datus function as a bija. Yeah. And Shravaka Bhumi also says, uh, this is one of the uh, oldest uh, layers of the uh, Yogacara uh, Bhumi. It says, uh, question, among them, uh, what are the data and what is the proficiency in the data? Answer, uh, data are 18, and each of these 18 elements arises and emerges from its own data, seed, and gotra. Yeah. So, uh, all of the 18 elements arise from its own data, uh, bija and gotra. And we should note here that Shravaka Bhumi is, as I said, one of the oldest layers of the Yogacara Bhumi. And in this Shravaka Bhumi, uh, we don't have idealist uh, element. And uh, in the uh, established uh, Yogacara theory, uh, everything, including external world, arises from the Vija stored in our area of Vijnana. And But that kind of uh, theory uh, does not exist at this stage. There is no area of Vijnana. There is uh, no idealism in Shravaka Bhumi. But still, it says that 18 datas, 18 datas, obviously, uh, include not only internal elements, but also external elements. Everything arises from Bija. And how can that be possible? Uh, you know, I think what they had in mind is simply that, you know, each of the 18 data gives rise to the same element in the uh, next succeeding uh, moment. Yeah, that's all. Uh, uh, this is Panchabhijanya Kaya Sambhrikta Manobhumi Vinishtya, the first chapter of the Vinishtya Sangrahani. Uh, here, uh, what is seen? Uh, it is not the case that a distinct entity separate from the sanskaras is called seed. The sanskaras existing, arising, and staying in a certain manner are called seeds and also fruit. And uh, for, those of, uh, for those of you who, attending the, uh, who attended the uh, seminar this morning, this is actually uh, section number one of that Bija discussion that I omitted this morning. And so uh, this, you know, uh, as we discussed this morning, uh, uh, from the section four onward, uh, Bija was uh, defined as Parikarpta Svababa Abhinvesha Vasana. And, and there, the text also says that uh, that seed is neither identical nor different from uh, dharmas. But here, the text says that uh, sanskaras are called seeds and also fruit. So, bijas are not different from dharmas, period. And uh, here, no confusion between seeds and fruit is observed. With regard to the past sanskaras, it is called fruit. But with regard to the future sanskaras, it is called seed. Thus, uh, when it is seed with regard to something, with regard to the same thing, it is not fruit. When it is fruit with regard to something, with regard to the same thing, it is not seed. Yeah, uh, so uh, the model is something like this. Uh, each of the uh, 18 data, you know, gives rise to the same element in the uh, following moment. And with regard to its, uh, the next, um, next moment of the same element, uh, this is bija and this is para. But uh, with, in this uh, relationship, uh, the same element, uh, this is the para of this bija, but at the same time, this functions as bija to the uh, following uh, moment of the same element. Yeah, and Vinisha Sangraha, Pancha Vijnara Kaya, Samprekta, Manobun Vinisha also said, uh, you know, the same thing as uh, what we have seen in the Abhidharma Samuchya Varsha. Uh, that which 
is a visual fac uh, faculty of the eye, but not eye data is the last moment of the eye of the eye heart. Uh, this is the first uh, possibility of that tetralemma. It, so, uh, uh, uh. so that is called so because it reproduces the same element in the following moment. Yeah, okay, so this is the old uh, model. And then uh, simultaneous causality. And, uh, and there are two subtypes of the simultaneous causality theory. The first type is this one. Uh, for the generative cause, it must precede its result. But for uh, supporting cause, uh, they can be simultaneous. And uh, one example is this one. Uh, in the business of Sangrahani, if the visual faculty of the eye and the eye consciousness have the nature of cause and effect, how can they be simultaneous? If they are simultaneous, how can they have the nature of cause and effect? Uh, answer, uh, it is not reasonable that the eye consciousness arises based on the visual faculty of eye like a seed and a sprout. Uh, why not? Uh, this is because the eye is not the generative cause uh, of the eye conscious, but the supporting cause. So, induria is only supporting cause, it's not a generative cause. Therefore, like a flame and the light, uh, these two can be a cause and an effect. Uh, <clears throat> while existing simultaneously. Uh, like the eye and the eye consciousness, ear, nose, uh, tongue, body, and their corresponding consciousness should also be seen in the same way. Otherwise, because there is no basis, uh, eye and um, other types of consciousness can't arise even though they have their own seeds. Yeah, so uh, in this model, uh, supporting cause uh, can be simultaneous. Uh, and uh, this refers to the sense, uh, sense faculty, induria, that uh, coexists with Vijnana. But uh, generative cause uh, must be the same element in the previous moment. They cannot coexist with its result. Yeah, and uh, this is uh, the theory we saw in the Tattva Siddhi. And Sabitarka Sabichara Dibumi uh, says, uh, this is uh, another passage quoted in the uh, Chanwe uh, It says, uh, even though an impermanent element is a cause of impermanent element, it is a cause of another element and of itself in the subsequent moment, but not of itself in the same moment. And How I should uh, interpret uh, that uh, this uh, another element refers to uh, the uh, actualized uh, dharma, and so uh, uh, parababa refers to uh, you know the relationship between bija and dharma, and subababa uh, refers to. Uh, uh, the succession of Bija uh, themselves. Uh, yeah, but probably uh, the original uh, meaning is that, uh, you know, each uh, datus, uh, you know, uh, uh, so uh, for something else, for example, uh, in, the, in the relationship between Indriya and Vijnana, uh, they can be simultaneous. But uh, for the same uh, element like uh, uh, Chakshir Vijnana, uh, no two uh, Chakshir Vijnana can coexist. So uh, their relationship must be only successive. Yeah. And the second uh, subtype is uh, Bija and Dharma are can be simultaneous. But uh, the succession uh, between Bija and Bija are successive. And uh, this is found in Mahayana Sangraha. And this is also quoted in the uh, Chamesha room. 
uh, how then should one understand the simultaneous and mutual causality between that earlier Virginiana and those defiled elements? It is just like the arising of a flame and burning the wick of a lamp, uh, which are mutually simultaneous. Uh, this is also like a bundle of reeds that depend each other and do not fall. Likewise, uh, here also mutual causality should be understood. Uh, Aria Vigiliana is the cause of defiled elements, and likewise, defiled elements are the cause of Aria Vigiliana. Just generative cause is established because um, other generative causes are not observed. Yeah, and here, uh, Bijas are stored in Aria Vigiliana. So, uh, this uh, obviously uh, presupposes in the Aria Vigiliana theory. And after the introduction of Aria Vigiliana, uh, there is a separate realm for uh, potential bija. And so, uh, potential bija and, uh, you know, active dharmas can uh, coexist. Now, uh, this is a data uh, model, I think. And uh, also, Mahayana Sangha had quoted in Chawe Shurum, uh, seeds are regarded as momentary, coexisting with a fruit, continuously operating specific uh, relying on conditions and giving rise to their own corresponding uh, fruit. Yeah, so uh, uh, this is also a discussion between uh, Bija and Dharma. And Bija and Dharma can be uh, coexisting, uh, the Mahayana Sangra says, because it presupposes uh, Arya Vijnana. And so uh, in this model, uh, there is a realm for potential bijas uh, separate from the uh, actual dharma. So uh, these two can be uh, simultaneous. So this, this is different from the earlier model. So uh, in conclusion, I think uh, in the old uh, uh, portions of the Yogacara Bhumi, each of the 18 dharmas were considered to reproduce itself in the subsequent moment. And in that sense, that is what are called bijas. But this is quite different from uh, the earlier uh, Virginiana uh, uh, you know, uh, system of bijas. And in this model, uh, bija is not uh, latent. Bijas and actual dharmas are indistinguishable. They are basically the same thing. Yeah. Uh, with regard to the uh, following moment, uh, the same dharma is called a bija. Yeah. So no, no, there's no, no distinction between bija and dharma. And in this model, a generative cause must precede its fruit. Coexisting elements can only be supporting causes like indurias or uh, arambanas. In this moment, uh, I'm sorry, uh, this model does not presuppose area virginiana or vision optimatra. So even though uh, uh, Bumi, for example, says that uh, 18 data arise from their uh, respective bijas, uh, they are not talking about uh, idealist uh, theory. They are uh, only saying that each of the 18 data reproduced itself uh, in the uh, following moment. Uh, after the introduction of Arya Vijnana, bijas and actual dharmas belong to uh, some of distinct uh, realms, and thus uh, they can coexist while being cause and effect. Uh, the two theories uh, in the Chawe Seirun seem to represent these old and new models, I think. So uh, even though uh, Chawe Seirun is, as I said, uh, uh, is available only in Chinese, uh, I think uh, Chawe Seirun uh, can be uh, witness to the historical development in Indian yoga child tradition. Thank you very much. Yeah. So first, I wanted to thank you very much, Sensei, for this uh, wonderful lecture. Uh, yeah, we, we, I can see now that it would have, in an ideal world, we would have had this lecture first and the seminar <laughs> after that, because now we would have been really up to date with Bijas and uh, able to, to dive into a, a specific debate uh, uh, with which we, we struggled a little bit this morning. But um, it's, it was very interesting. Uh, I wanted to, uh, to ask you, um, I'm sorry if it is uh, an ignorant question, but I wanted to ask you maybe a bit more uh, about your view about this Chan Wei Shalom mm -hmm. and its composition, because yeah. you, seems to, you seem to, to point in, uh, in uh, several moments in your lecture that this has been a bit dismissed as a kind of late uh, Chinese composition, 
uh, by a specialist of yoga charas. Mm. Uh, but in fact, you have uh, you think that it might be an, the, re the reflection of a, of yeah. a late, uh, fairly late yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Indian commentary that reflects the kind of debates that we're ongoing at the moment and mm -hmm. etc. Yeah. Uh, could you develop a little bit on this mm -hmm. and how you would basically so you would date it immediately before Shuan Song basically around the time of uh, his masters or uh... you know uh, you know one. Uh, one thing that caused me uh, to think this way is uh, uh, the Vibhita health of India Vyakya I mentioned several times, you know. And in my earlier uh, papers, I discussed uh, another uh, controversy finding uh, Chambe Shirun, and that is uh, about the origination of Bija. And, you know, so as we discussed this morning, you know, somebody says uh, uh, that Bija exist by nature. So we, we can only enhance some potential element. You know, all the good element, good potentiality and bad potentiality are all within us. But whether or not uh, we uh, nourish, enhance good tendencies or bad tendencies is upon ourselves, right? Yeah, and so that is the uh, first theory. So all the element is uh, already here potentially by nature. And the second theory is that no, 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 no. All the teachers are implanted by your conscious act. Yeah. And so that is the second uh, sort of newly engendered Bija theory. And the third theory says that there are both possibilities. Some of them are innate, but some of them are generated by your act. Yeah. So the combination of the first two. Yeah. So these three theories are uh, uh, you know, are listed in Chame Shirun. And almost exactly the same three theories are found in Vivrita Gokhyarta Finda Vyakya. Yeah. So, uh, so unless, uh, as I said this morning, Vivrita Gokhyarta Finda Vyakya was somehow influenced by Chinese Buddhism, uh, which I, I think is rather unlikely, uh, the possibility uh, the likelihood is that uh, that was the uh, style of later Indian Yogacara texts. And only by some, uh, what's it, uh, historical coincidence, not many later Yogacara texts survived in India. So we are not uh, too familiar with uh, the later style of Yogacara uh, texts, you know. Uh, but uh, as I said, Vipita uh, Gokhya Pinda Vyakya and also uh, Yogacara Bhumi Vyakya, this is another commentary extant only in Tibetan. They also have similar style, you know, uh, theory A, theory B, theory C. Yeah, and Chame Shirun also. So my suspicion is that probably Chame Shirun had some Indian original very close to the present. Chinese text and Xuanza maybe added so something, but basically just translated the original text in front of him. And then, uh, as I said, uh, Tsuen Dashi wanted uh, to say that he only knows some secret. Yeah, uh, only inherited the essence of Yagachara from Xuanza. Yeah, so uh, you have to listen to me. Yeah. <laughs> and so for that, Purpose he invented in the story of the compilation of uh, Chang Wei Shirun. That's my suspicion. I may be wrong, but yeah, that's my impression. You know, uh, you know, one. Uh, Any other question? Yes. Um, thank you very much for both talks today. Um, I was wondering if you could. Clarify for me um, where uh, latency and manifestation of the seeds, so Anushaya and Parivastana, fit into the timeline of the earlier model of Bija. So, d is there? Can we understand um, latency and manifestation in terms of uh, coexistence, uh, generative and? I may be wrong, but just my impression. Oh.
Yeah, uh, you know, uh, when we discuss uh, the uh, BHS theory, you know, one, one of the issues is the relationship between the so-called uh, South Atlantica uh, theory, South Atlantic model, and uh, Yoga Chara model. And in abdominic uh, texts, uh, we find something similar to Bija, for example, uh, Anudatu, right? Yeah, and so the relationship between them is certainly an issue. And uh, this is a difficult question, but uh, uh, one of the things uh, is that uh, according to uh, my friend Robert Kritzer, etc., many of the, uh, uh, you know, uh, apparently the first uh, attestable occurrence of the word uh, South Atlantica is in the Abhidharma Koshabasha. Yeah, and in the case of Edward Koshyabasa, almost all the so-called South Kant theories uh, can be traced back to Yogacara Bhumi. Yeah, so what uh, Vasvandu calls uh, South Atlantica uh, may have been uh, sort of, uh, what's it, uh, concealed reference to Yoga Chara tradition, yeah, and that's what uh, creature suspects, and uh, I have similar impressions, yeah. So, uh, mm, yeah, th that is a uh, difficult uh, question, but, you know, if we follow the earlier model I discussed today, you know, there is no, what's that, a real distinction between Bija and Dharma. Dharma can function as bija for the uh, uh, you know, next moment of the same element. And if bija means only that, and bija and the cause are almost the same thing, so there's no what's that, a potential uh, unmanifest element and manifest dharma. Uh, that kind of distinction is not found in the earlier model. And to that, extent, probably, Sarvastvada Master would also agree. If, uh, if they say that uh, some potentiality exists somewhat separately from the actual Dharma, then Sarvastvada uh, Master would have difficulty. Yeah, but, uh, so, the exact relationship uh, among those uh, traditions is difficult. One of the difficulties is that the, you know, information is limited. We, we have only limited number of texts, so we cannot know everything. Yeah. That was a historical hit, uh, process, I think. Bija for the. Uh, uh, I have a question about the simile of the two horns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that particularly Chinese, or is that... No, 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 is uh, there... this, is, uh, this is found in Tatmasiddhi, and Tatmasiddhi is the extant only in Chinese, okay. but it must be an Indian text. Okay, so it's, yeah. it's a familiar simile also in, in the Indian context. Yeah, I, I think so. Yeah. All right, yeah, okay. Yeah. And, it, and does it have a set meaning? Does it re refer to... to two things, or duality, or coexistence, or is the flexible metaphor? Yeah, you know, so uh, it's simply saying that, you know, uh, uh, you, you know, for, for example, uh, you are uh, sitting side by side with this gentleman, right. and, but uh, you are not the cause of this gentleman, right. and this gentleman so, is not sorry. the cause of yourself. But, but does it appear in terms of causality? Well, but the, the metaphor is it always used in, in the context of explaining causality. Mm, yeah, but, but in this context, the simile is denying causality. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's yeah. about causality. So, yeah, it's, it's, uh, of so as causality. far as you know, there, is, there are no other usages of this metaphor. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm selfish question because I, in the text that I'm working on, mm -hmm. there's also Speaking of the horns, ah. and I have a bit of trouble of interpreting. Oh. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so, so what's what the context? Well, it's, just, it's a Zen text, uh -huh. okay. and it's it's it's. I'm not sure if it's supposed to uh, refer to duality, like two things yeah. being different, or actually, as it seems to say here, two things being actually coexistent or mm. being one. Mm. So this apparently has to do with oneness or two or twoness in the sense that they are. 
two horns, but they, they are one animal, or they, they point mm -hmm. in different directions. Mm -hmm. So I was just wondering if there is any kind of usage in the text you're working on in this particular scenario. Uh, well, you know, mm, my intuitive reaction is probably the context is different. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, well, Within the Chan tradition, also there are historical developments and there are uh, wide varieties. And I worked on some uh, Chan texts uh, from the Northern School. And, you know, uh, at least for some of the Northern Chan uh, texts, you know, there's a very uh, what's the, uh, strong influence of Yogacara uh, theory. There are many, many Yogacara technical terms used in uh, yeah, uh, the Northern School uh, texts. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, one stereotypic image is you know, fashion school is you know, scholastic, hair splitting, you know, uh, impractical uh, scholasticism, and China is very intuitive and practical and direct approach to the reality. So they are the opposite ends. But this is not necessarily the case. Uh, in Sometimes they and fashion come very close to each other. Yeah. yeah that, uh, uh, some similes, uh, uh, for example, uh, fingers cannot touch itself, mm -hmm. and the sword cannot cut itself, yeah. yeah. And that simile is uh, a popular one found in Yoga Chan and Abhidharma text. And the same similarity is found in some Northern Chan right. texts. Yeah. So uh, that kind of shared uh, uh, property uh, it, uh, certainly exists. Yeah. But in, in the case of these two horns, uh, I'm not so sure. Okay, thank you very much. I have some more. <laughs> Maybe one more. <laughs> Well, um, this seems to be very um, philosophical, yes. but um, I, I hear that you also wrote an article about the, the practical yeah. context of Yogacara. So I was wondering if this ties in with, with, uh, with a discourse about practice. Uh, I can imagine cause and effect is very important. I, I know in China and Japan it becomes important in the question whether Buddhist practice is necessary as causing as a cause for awakening, mm -hmm. so the status of, of Buddhist practice um, seems to tie into this. So I was wondering if you could speak a little bit about the the, the kind of practical context in which these discussions um, arise. <laughs> well, yeah, uh, this morning. Uh, I discussed the historical development of the uh, Bija theory. Yeah. And uh, uh, in, in this talk, I, you know, uh, what I talked about is mostly is the very early form of uh, Yogacara uh, Bija theory. And uh, in the later form, uh, it, <laughs> let's say, uh, in the earlier form, uh, all the potentialities, as I said, uh, is already within you. Yeah, and so it is a, just a matter of uh, enhancing, promoting which element. Yeah, and th that is decided by your uh, practice. Yeah, and, but uh, in the more developed form, uh, all beaches are implanted by your act. And uh, act basically refers to your uh, conceptual thinking. Yeah. So all conceptual thinking, uh, whatever you think uh, or judge within your mind, leaves its record in the area of jnana. And that uh, let's say, uh, creates and decides your cognitive world in the subsequent moment. Yeah. And probably that model reflect their uh, meditative experience, I think, yeah. Uh, one of the uh, points of Mahayanist meditation is penetration into the non-conceptual realm. 
Yeah. And for average people, uh, conceptual recognition is matter of course. So we never uh, doubt uh, that uh, cognition. But uh, once you experience that intuitive world uh, beyond uh, conceptualization, you realize that the uh, conceptualized uh, worldview is uh, just uh, uh, bondage. Yeah, and that binds your uh, cognition. And so that kind of reflection uh, that uh, this vision uh, uh, of conceptualization model, I would imagine. Yeah. So uh, there is uh, probably certain links between Bija, uh, at least uh, between the data Bija model and uh, the uh, practice, I think. And also, uh, you know, uh, one of the very recent articles uh, about Aria Vigniana, uh, I discussed uh, the practical uh, background of Aria Vigniana. You know, uh, what I uh, argued is that, uh, you know, usually Aria Vigniana is uh, understood to be uh, uh, so something like subconsciousness. Yeah, and certainly it is one. Uh, Aria Vigniana uh, has that aspect as well, but it also has a physiological aspect. It is very closely tied to the body. Yeah, and Aria Vigniana maintains the body and keeps the body alive. So when the Aria Vigniana is separate from your body, you are dead. Yeah, and while you are alive, uh, the state of your body and the state of Aria Vigniana are correlated. Yeah, so uh, when your Aria Vigniana is in a bad shape, your uh, body is also in a bad shape. It doesn't work nicely. And after meditation, uh, your body, you know, uh, we usually think that you know, meditation is a spiritual practice. It transforms your mind. Yeah, but I, of course that's true. But at the same time, it also transforms your body. And so body transformation and mental transformation are concomitant. And both of them are based on the transformation of Arya Vijnana itself. Because Arya Vijnana is the basis for your conscious mind and also your body. Yeah. And so uh, I think Arya Vijnana has, at least in the original, uh, very practical background, I think. Yeah. Mm. It's actually a nice end to this <laughs> <laughs> lecture. So let's thank you. Thank you.